this being my last video on the subject, it's also going to be the shortest. Regardless, populism within an aristocracy. And for this one, I'm citing the Roman Republic, which its form of democracy is different from a U.S. style democracy or a third world nation type democracy. And that it's not a free for all where there's a potential for a military industrial complex. The way a Roman style democracy or an aristocratic one pop worked is that it wasn't a free for all. It was more like a mafia. And the best person to explain this is asymmetrical warfare. For example, if you owe somebody money and they go for office, you gotta vote for them. However, the interesting thing about an aristocracy is that it's a divisional playing field. The best way to describe it is it's kind of like those martial arts sports where there's a division between weights. There's a division between the classes. And because we didn't reach that Judeo-Christianity concept of equality under the law. Again, referring back to my older video. The plebes had their own courts. The patricians had their own courts. The populist groups formed... For example, the plebeians, they used to be really held back until they formed their own... What's the best way to describe it? <clears throat> until they formed their own assembly, the People's Assembly. And that's basically how they were able to ascend in power. It wasn't just about taking the resources from everybody else obtaining some privileges, obtaining the ability to get money from everybody else. It was more about them being able to send power to the point that they were able to become consuls. And of course, I'm not speaking about the period of the empire that happened after that, but regardless, in an aristocratic populace, for aristocratic populism, there's a bit of a, if I can call it a segregation within the classes, where they're div segregated into divisions of law and power. And it's a good thing and it's also a bad thing as well. Because that means that some people, you can't just ask for free shit. You have to earn your shit. With Rome, everyone has to act virtuous. Everyone has to do the virtuous thing. It's not like the situation where you can be a lazy ass bum, fuck a lot of people, and eventually getting fucking Tourette's or something. Eventually get some fucking free cash. Now you had to earn your way into having more power, having more representation. Sometimes who you marry, that matters. Sometimes what people say about you, what rumors are spreading, that also matters a lot. So there's a lot of things that come into play. There's a lot of variables. And because it's divisional, it's not the free-for-all where... What we have is the person that's represented the most has the most power. That could be basically be everyone. Everyone's trying to achieve that. I mean, anybody can be president practically. Look at the last three guys. You've got a sociopath, a nigga that didn't give a fuck, and a porn star practically. And they all became presidents. It's a free-for-all. Alright, hope you enjoyed this video. It's probably going to be... Yeah, it is going to be the last video on the subject, but it's not going to be my last video of the day. It's Mr. Rocket 7D.